Hey everyone, let's talk about money. Valorant has two economies to manage. Weapons and Agent Utility make up one of them, while the other is that of Agent Ultimates. Because of this, the potential to snowball a game is very high in Valorant. It's one of the main reasons that we see two relatively equal teams in completely one-sided games. In Valorant, much like the real world, the rich tend to get richer as they buy more weapons, turn it into more kills and thus more ultimates, and the game can get out of hand very, very quickly. But what if I told you that there is a way to break that cycle and take back control of the Valorant economy? Welcome to the wonderful world of NFTs. No, no, no. I don't mean these cringy monkey pictures either. Noob Friendly Tactics, or NFT for short, is a playstyle that many of us should probably be pretty familiar with. Tactics like over-rotating as five, wildly unpredictable aggression, and hilariously chaotic spray and prey gunfights are all core pieces of the NFT strategy book. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Notice the buys for each team as we start this round, and then pay close attention to the immediate information exchanged by the KO knives. Rise detects three players, while version one only scans one. And for Rise, this is a clear green light to hit the B site where there are less players defending. Version one can also read the situation that Rise sees. B site is more vulnerable and probably the target. They decide to immediately gamble all of the round on this information in. and rotate all of their A players to B. On a full buy round, this would obviously be a big mistake, but with worse weapons, the cost to benefit of risky plays like this is significantly more rewarding. Version one buys enough time with their B main utility setup for the rotations to come in, and this allows them to take a 5 on 5 fight at close range before Rise has been able to get out of the B main choke point. Rise is clearly not expecting version 1 to be gambling this hard towards B as they continue their standard entry setup with the Sova drone, and this springs version 1's trap. As soon as the drone gets used, version 1 flashes through the window with KO and several players swing to engage. KO then follows up the flash with a fragment grenade through the same window as Rise starts to win the fight with their superior weapons. With four players hit by the grenade, KO then pop flashes around the corner, and the rest of version 1 floods into the space. Base, spamming away against the fully blinded attackers. The bunched up Rise players are a perfect target for classic right clicks and frenzy spam since it's nearly impossible to miss. The combined chip damage from the pistols and the fragment drops Rise in a heap of bodies. Honestly, if we removed the broadcast HUD, this fight probably looks a lot like what you might expect to see in a gold ranked game, although with slightly better utility. You see, version 1 are reducing the difficult situation into a very simple one through the use of NFTs. Instead of having to read the map for a whole round, they immediately gamble and rotate. Instead of having to take clean aim duels, they opt for a chaotic mess of bullets and utility. In this simplified version of Valorant, the normal advantages matter less, and the outcome becomes more random. Randomness and chaos tend to favor the underdog. The amount of times I see teams playing their weak buy rounds as if they have the same firepower as the other team's fully kitted squad is crazy. I don't care how insane of an aimer you are. Trying to take individual long range rifle duels with just a pistol and no armor is dumb if you can avoid it. Version 1 knows this and does their absolute best to drag opponents down to their level in these situations. Just look at this round by version 1 against a full by opponent after losing the pistol. V1 knows the attackers are very likely going to just run at them and spray them down with better weapons and armor. So what do they do? Version 1 plays away from the initial contact with the enemy. Look how far back they are on both A and B site. By offering no initial resistance to knights, it probably looks a lot like a badly guessed gamble stack to the attackers. This gives knights the confidence to charge in, and it also gives the A players for version 1 more time to rotate towards B before any fighting actually happens. Knights gets zero information with their Sova drone or dart when knights thinks that they have a free plant, bam. Shorty kill, shorty kill. Suddenly, the attacking sage is alone on site with defenders who are hiding behind smokes and upgrading their weapons. Meanwhile, Sova loses a 3v1 fight in B main as he tries to come in to help, and the attacking Astra is nowhere near the play as they spend time trying to catch a rotation through middle that happened 10 seconds ago. Version 1 collapses onto sage to make it a 4v1, and just look at this incredibly annoying setup to make sure that V1 gives up as few free kills as possible. 
mobile. The turret is watching Sidewalk and all four players are holding the stairs. When the attacking Astra kills the turret, V1 immediately rotates three players crouched out of sight against the wall and still holding stairs while one player acts as the spotter for Sidewalk. The play ends up working perfectly as Astra is immediately traded out for the round victory. Again, this very simple strategy of rotating early and camping close corners with shorties pays off for version 1 as they go on to win 4 rounds in a row and easily take over this map. The thing is, when you're in a losing situation, risky plays become so much better. Dry walking through a viper smoke can change the course of a round, and because it seems like such a terrible play in a normal situation, the chances of catching the other team off guard are very high. So the next time you're down bad with nothing to lose, buy some shorty coin, gamble it up on an A-Stack NFT project, or invest heavily in some push through smoke.io.